Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in for another Halo 5 Forge video. This is something I'm really excited to discuss and show you guys, as it can spice up how you play your custom games. Now, unfortunately, 343 hasn't given us any Rex and Forge, other than the Recon DMR that's on Stasis, the one that I'm currently holding. Now, you might be asking yourself, what exactly does the title of this video mean? And what am I hiding behind this garage door? Well, don't worry. I won't keep you waiting much longer. Let's go take a look inside. Oh, there you are. Glad you're okay. I was getting a little bit worried. This garage can get a little bit dangerous. I'm just gonna grab a quick drink, but stay safe and take a quick look around if you'd like. Did you see anything you like? I'm sure you did, because there's some pretty awesome stuff in this garage. And now you know the secret of what I've been building behind that door. Now allow me to paint this picture for you. Imagine you have an underground hangar, and in that underground hangar, you have an anti-air wraith, which is essentially a wraith with three anti-air turrets attached. Now imagine calling that thing up from the ground, and seeing the look on your opponent's face as you and three of your buddies hop in and try and gun them down. Now imagine the look on your face when you see the same thing. Yeah, you better run. Now that you've seen everything, allow me to give you a demonstration of some of my favorite vehicles and discuss with you how everything handles and how everything works. Let's go. I'll give you a look at the Phaeton first. So let me just open the garage of Sky Hatch right quick. So this is the anti-air phaeton right here. As you probably figured out when you saw the double A's on the wall, every other vehicle is an anti-air version, whereas the others are all anti-infantry. Now the great thing about this is it handles decently well, and as long as you're moving, it doesn't wobble too much. When you boost around, if someone's in the turret, they stay in it and they don't die, whereas in the Banshee, if you do any Banshee tricks, um, it can get a little bit dicey and 9 out of 10 times the passenger will die. Now you want to be careful where you place the turret on the Phaeton because it won't allow you to go up or down. It just automatically pick a direction if you do it correctly. You can see here it works quite nicely. Now depending on where you place the turret will change the view. Uh, you can look around when you're flying to get a different view. But that's that and it flies pretty great and it's pretty fun. So on to the next vehicle. So I'm going to go with the Gun Goose right here because this is pretty fun too. Not only do you have uh, guns on the front of it, but you also have unlimited grenades if you're riding passenger. And you got anti-infantry, or excuse me, uh, anti-air on the back of this one, but there is another one that has anti-infantry. Well, there's not too much to say about this, it handles nicely, and it's fast, and it's effective. Now let's move on to a Banshee. see here it flies great no glitching uh, I think this would be a pretty awesome vehicle to use to, if you wanted to have just like an air battle like a dogfight uh, because you have extra support not only is there anti-air on this but you got your cannon on there and like I said before the view that you get depends on where you put the turret so you just got to be um, just got to be experimental with it and eventually you'll get the results that you desire if I go here and do a banshee trick, if there was somebody in there, they'd be knocked out and be killed. Let's have some civilian vehicle fun, shall we? 
This is pretty awesome because it's harder for you to take damage, obviously, if you're inside the car. Basically, only the passenger in the car can take damage or the person on the turret. Look how cool that looks. And just as a demonstration, I'll show some clips later. The turret does indeed work. So I think this would be pretty awesome if you had a race game type. It could get pretty hectic if you have turrets shooting at each other while trying to complete a course. Now let's move on to that anti-air wraith that I was talking about. And this vehicle is pretty awesome because not only do you have yourself as the gunner, but you also have the passenger, and then you have the two shade turrets on the side to lay down some serious firepower on the battlefield. Now this is a good vehicle to talk to you about some additional turret things. That being that, since these turrets are on normal physics, if you have them placed in a way that they can touch part of your vehicle when you're turning, it'll wig out like so. Well, normally when these turrets are on phase, they can turn through anything, but as this is a glitch, it's not meant to happen. But as long as it's not touching the vehicle, it's not a problem, and it works pretty well. And if you know that, everything's going to go smoothly. Alright, now it's definitely time for the super tank, as I like to call it. This Scorpion, as you can see, has four anti-air turrets in it. Another thing I wanted to note about the turret placement is that if you place them too low on the vehicle, it can really cause the vehicle to wig out, like, it'll blow up, it'll start auto-driving and not in a good way, or when you get in it, it'll just flip all around and be undrivable. So you just really gotta experiment with where you place the turrets on whatever vehicle you're using no set place to put it so you'll eventually get where you like it and get where it works and you'll get a pretty awesome result from this. for the final vehicle we're gonna go with well whatever you want to call this thing as you can see here it kind of puts me in a first person view where I have it placed but, you can change that depending on where you place the helmet. Uh, now, as you can see, it's pretty cool to drive. It looks quite awesome from this view. Obviously, you can't shoot, but you'll have the gunners up on the wings and on the center to help you out. And here we go. Here's what it looks like from third-person perspective. It's pretty great. It handles quite nicely. You can boost around, just the minor hiccup there because I have the back door a little bit too low. Um, but it's pretty fun. If you'd like to see some bonus vehicle footage, be sure to stay tuned to the very end of the video where you'll see people on the shade turrets and get to see that action. That's all I have to show you for today guys. Thanks for stopping by the garage and taking a look at some of the custom wrecked vehicle variants that I made. Hopefully these will inspire you to make some cool vehicles of your own and come up with some crazy custom game ideas. If you like these types of videos, be sure to stay tuned to my channel for more Halo 5 content in the near future. And as always, thanks for watching.